yeah welcome everyone to the mechanics class um, as you know this is our second class and uh, in the first class we have studied the syllabus oh yeah overall how it looks and uh, we also understood the classification of the subject that is uh, we understood the definition of mechanics it's um, it is subdivided into two parts statics and dynamics and then um, we studied some basic laws newton's law then we also studied uh, the laws related to the forces such as um, let's say um, law of triangle of forces law of um, polygon of forces and uh, yeah and also we have studied some um, basic things such as uh, how how we can draw the free body diagram how we can transmit the force from along the line of action and uh, we also studied the poor system that is uh, at the end i think we have studied this part uh, coplanar and non coplanar force system and how the concurrent and non concurrent force systems looks like and uh, finally we have studied some examples um, uh, where we calculated the resultant not in just the case of um, the um, concurrent force system, but also in the case of non-concurrent force system. Okay. Till now we have studied is like basic things without any friction. Um, even the free body diagrams which we have drawn um, in the last class were. Um, without considering the friction where uh, we assume that the surfaces are smooth and then in that case how the uh, how we can draw the free body diagram under different situations like when a body is kept on the surface in between two surface or uh, if it is um, hinged to um, some surface and uh, if um, a ladder is there then how it will look like okay so all these things we have studied in um, in the previous session and uh, in today's session uh, what we are going to study is um, uh, further i would like to continue that part of free body diagram to little bit complex like uh, system such as pulleys okay and uh, we will also study lamy's theorem and then we'll move towards the friction part okay so so it will be easy for you to understand uh, and uh, implement the friction in the free body diagrams and then we'll solve the problems okay so that is the agenda um, for today's class so um so for some time i'll give some um, concepts to you and later on i expect you to solve some problems um, so it will be today's session will be a mix of little bit theory and uh, or of problems okay yeah let me um, give an example of pulleys mm -hmm. so we have studied many examples in the last class to draw the free body diagram but pulleys were pulleys was not covered but now we will study it So try to understand the arrangement here. Okay. Yeah. Um, I hope you understood the figure. We have two pulleys A and B, and uh, these are still frictionless. Okay. I am not considering friction because uh, we have not introduced that 
topic yet so these are the frictionless pulleys um, and uh, i want you to try to draw the free body diagrams of each of this so we know free body diagram means what we are removing the uh, the ports or constraints on it okay we can clearly see pulley a is uh, attached to pulley b and also attached um, to the surface right let me just show you through laser pointer here we we can see here we have attached the pulley a and also here we have attached so if you want to remove the attachment then um, you will have one string here you will have one string on right hand side and we have one we are pulling it down with a 2p so this is how the free board diagram will look like for this and for b we have attached here and we also at attached here so if you want to draw the free board diagram we'll have one string coming towards down one string going towards up and we have force p applied to the another string so let me show you how it will look like so in drawing the free board diagram is removing the supports and um, cons constraints on it okay so let me show you for pulley a as it is i'm drawing nothing different this is 2p as it is the one string is going up another string is going up right that's how we'll draw the free board diagram that's all so, but how much will be the tension in the two strings we we know that 2p is coming down means considering the summation of all vertical forces we should have 2p force going upward right and uh, as we can clearly see it is a symmetric pulley where um, 2p is at the center means we should have individually pp force in each string okay is it clear to you all or rather than the, uh, assume this 2p is the weight of the pulley okay even if we don't apply any uh, force okay but let's say pulley has some weight in that case also um, the stuff will be same what about the uh, second pulley second pulley one string will go up we don't know the um, how much force will be there okay how much tension will be there but we do know that this value is p right because uh, here we have p at this part right so if upward force is p then downward force also has to be p and on right hand side we have our one more p which is already given okay this part so that i am keeping as it is so we can clearly see here 2p force is coming down or 2p tension we have in the downward direction then upward direction we should have same 2p so that's why 2p should be here okay so in this way you can draw the free body diagram so similarly uh, this is an arrangement another ad arrangement could be like this but the concept remains same right um, you have to consider all the strings whichever um, are there in the figure and just remove the uh, just remove the parts whichever wherever we have fixed it okay so this is let's say weight w is attached to it and we have some support to this pulley here and uh, yeah this is center so in this case same thing you will apply you have pulley we have one weight attached to it and we have some tension here okay so something like this um, arrangement will look like so it is uh, and depending on whether weight of the pulley is given or not all those things we have to consider so that that will study uh, later once we come to the problems but as of now try to understand that we are just removing the constraints we are just removing the supports in order to draw the free word diagram okay one more topic i would like to um, introduce is uh, lamis theorem sir 
Sir, can you explain the previous pre-driver diagram at beauty? Okay, which previous one you slide, want? Sir. Second one, sir. Yeah, uh, nothing else. Okay, uh, let me just remove it. Um, and here, so what I have done in the first, if you, um, let's say, try to draw the free body, I just removed this part, right? And uh, here also, I just removed, um, I break, uh, break it like this, correct? Same thing I'll do. I'll just remove this part and draw the figure in order to draw the free body diagram, okay? So removing the support gives you, um, or uh, removing the constraints gives you the free body diagram, okay? So here you will have some tension. Here you will have some tension. Here you will have some tension. Here in this direction, this direction. I hope both of the figures are clear to you now. Yes, sir. Sir, the second one, it is a fixed, uh, which support is it? Pin support or is a fixed support you are giving the pulley? Pulley is fixed. Pulley is, uh, uh, basically, pulley can rotate. Okay. Uh, pulley, you, pulley is not a beam or anything. Pulley means what? It can rotate about the center. Okay. Uh, yeah, you should not have like there is no uh, support given to the pulley you don't get confused into the uh, let's say beams and pulleys in beam you have different support let's say fixed support looks like this hinge support looks like this roller support looks like this okay that is for beams but for pulley pulley means um, a simple concept where it rotates about the center okay Are you following? Okay, sir. Got, got you, sir. But there can be frictional pulley or frictionless pulley. We'll go into the details of that when we study the friction concept. Okay. Um, how to calculate these tensions if, um, uh, like, depending on, because pulley will be there, means some friction will be there. So if friction is there, uh, then how to calculate these tensions and all, we'll study once I introduce the friction topic to you. As of now, I just want you to know like how we are drawing the free board diagrams, okay? In in case of police. Yeah. Any Anyone have any other doubt in this slide? Feel free to um, stop me in between. Okay. Um, another concept is um, Lamy's theorem. Mm. Most of you have heard about it before. So, it is for the three coplanar um, concurrent force system, you can say. Okay, so whenever a coplanar force is acting at a point uh, and that is in the equilibrium, then uh, we can say each force is proportional to the sine of angle between the other two forces. Okay, so that is the statement for it. Let me explain you through one figure here. So we have one P force going here. Let's say Q force going here. And uh, we have an R force going downward. Okay, PQR. Uh, this is beta. This is, let's say, gamma. And uh, this is alpha. Okay, so these three are the coplanar forces acting at a point which is in equilibrium. Then forces, these then each force is proportional to the sine of angle between the other forces. Uh, other forces. Okay, so what I'm saying is P is directly proportional to the sine of alpha. Okay, P is directly proportional to sine of alpha. Q is directly proportional to the sine of beta and uh, sorry and r is directly proportional to the sine of gamma this is what uh, the statement of the lamis theorem okay and uh, in short you can write it like this p divided by so if we if i equate p is equal to some proportionality constant into sine of alpha q will be also equal to some proportionality constant to sine of beta and r will be equal to some proportionality constant to sine of gamma so we can write sine of 
sorry p divided by sin of alpha has to be equal to q divided by sin of beta has to be equal to r divided by sin of gamma okay so whenever you have three four system which are coplanar and passing through a single point which is in equilibrium then you can apply this uh, theorem okay any doubt in this okay uh, feel free to ask if you have any doubt so now let's let me introduce some uh, friction and then uh, we'll study some problems random problems okay uh, which can be without friction or with friction so it will be good if i introduce first theory part and then um, we'll move towards problems okay write down um, heading surface friction or friction okay so what is friction friction is whenever the two surfaces are there which are in contact can you hear me all uh, hello yes sir yeah because someone has uh, said no audio um, so just wanted to confirm with all of you yes okay thank you um, let uh, let me repeat the definition of the friction um, so whenever two surfaces or uh, two bodies are um, in contact there is say uh, limited amount of some, um, amount of some resistance uh, to the sliding okay um, between them uh, wherever it is to the contact surface okay dharmesh is asking me to repeat the previous topic uh, can you tell me dharmesh what what is your doubt here uh, i can explain it in more detail if you want so uh, it, it is not, nothing to like uh, nothing dif difficult here to understand lamis theorem what i'm saying is whenever uh, i'll repeat if you want again i'll repeat p q r if three coplanar concurrent forces are there and uh, the point from which it is passing let's say point o is in equilibrium then according to lamis theorem the force is directly proportional to the sine of angle between the other two forces okay so hence p is directly proportional to sine alpha because sine alpha is the angle between q and r q is directly proportional to the sine of beta because beta is the angle between p and r and r is directly proportional to the sine of gamma because gamma is the angle between p and q okay and uh, these three things i have directly uh, let's say written in the um, form of e an equation that's all okay uh, nima has one question can you repeat free body diagrams nima we have discussed in the last class could you please go through the recording and if you still have any doubt feel free to uh, reach out to me on whatsapp i have already given the number okay but i would prefer that uh, we will have doubt clearing session on the same let's say same session you should ask the doubt um, and uh, at the end of the let's say um, at end we will arrange one one or two classes where you we can combine all your doubts and uh, clarify there as well okay but um, if you have not understood these free word diagrams i can explain you but if you want other free word diagrams which we have drawn uh, please refer the previous recording 
Uh, Nima, what is your doubt? Could you please elaborate? You are asking about pulleys or you are asking about the other freebird diagrams? Hello? Pulleys. Okay, let me explain you again. Um, can you uh, tell me what exactly you are uh, finding it difficult so I can elaborate it in more details? Yeah, feel free to unmute and speak. So you don't have to uh, worry, you can directly unmute and ask any question. P and 2P, okay. Uh, you know, um, Nima, whenever we say body is in equilibrium, summation of all horizontal forces has to be equal to zero, summation of all vertical forces has to be zero, and summation of all let's say moment has to be zero okay so here what i am considering is summation of all vertical forces is zero that is what i am using as an equation of equilibrium so if let me uh, draw the original figures yeah so in this figure if i want to draw the free board diagram of a okay this is how it will look like till this you understood or not how I have written how I have drawn this till this we have just removed the constraint or we have just re removed the support and as it is string we have we are drawing now the question comes what should be the value of these forces or these tensions right if summation of all vertical forces is zero when this pulley is in equilibrium that is possible only when if downward force is 2p the upward force also has to be 2p right because 2p minus 2p will become zero and then only let's say we'll say um, the body is in equilibrium so uh, total upward force nima has to be 2p and uh, if you see the system it is very sim uh, symmetric so whatever force you have here you should have same force here Okay. Let me share my screen again um, as I'm connecting through two devices if <clears throat> yeah if any issue ha happens uh, actually the device automatically switching the presenter mode um, I hope now um, 
you will be able to hear me and uh, see my screen. Yeah. So now, uh, Mina, yes, what I was explaining you to is, um, yeah, till this you have understood total force is 2p means this this also has to be 2p and as this figure is symmetric it should be p and p okay and the similar way we have drawn for the pulley number pulley name b okay yes anyone have any other doubt till this okay if no doubt um, let me introduce the topic friction Yeah, what I was explaining about friction is whenever two surfaces of the body are in contact with each other, uh, there will be some limited amount of resistance to the sliding or uh, the there will be tendency to oppose the sliding between them. OK, and. Uh, and this resistance or uh, uh, this opposing resistance to the sliding is known as friction force or you can simply call it as a friction. So what is basic cause of friction? The surfaces which are in contact are not perfectly smooth. OK. Um, if surfaces are not smooth. Okay? If surfaces are not smooth, it means uh, it will cause the friction or it will cause some resistance to the sliding right and uh, what do we mean by surfaces are not smooth means there will be some small microscopic irregularities or peaks or valleys up and downs on the surfaces and uh, these surfaces what will happen what will happen is they will interlock um, in between each other uh, while sliding and uh, cause the opposition to the uh, motion okay or opposition to the sliding motion between between them so uh, let me just show you one simple example so this is the surface and if this is the block okay if there is there is no friction or if this block is um, uh, kept on a very very smooth surface then with a small amount of force also you can move it okay but if the surface is rough okay you need huge amount of force to move this block okay because uh, the surface is uh, irregular and uh, that what is happening is because of that um, there will be interlock between the surfaces of this block and the ground surface and ultimately uh, you you need more force to overcome that resistance and in order to move this block okay so the friction is like or of two type you can say when see when body is at rest you need certain amount of force in order to move the block right that that phase or uh, let's say from complete equilibrium phase we can call it as a static friction when body is in motion right when your body is in motion still there will be a friction because surface is not surface is not changing surface is still rough right so it will still oppose some um, still try to oppose but our driving force is more than the opposing force hence body is moving right so as to maintain the motion um, we are applying more force okay but it doesn't mean in that case frictional force is zero friction force will be still there but we refer it as a kinematic friction not as a static friction okay so static friction is a concept when body is in equilibrium and whenever body is in motion we call it as a kinematic or dynamic friction okay so let's draw a simple figure to understand this concept so let's call it as a t frictional force or ff ff frictional force and p is let's say applied force okay here you are applying force p to the block 
weight is acting downward normal reaction will be upward if you remove the if you try to draw the free boy diagram of it and uh, pixel force will be in opposite direction ft okay so this is how free boy diagram will look like now um so this can be in between the two bodies as well if you replace the other surface with the body let's say body a and b same situation okay p you are applying here and here and here you have the contact between the two surfaces of the bodies okay so in both the cases you can refer um, the same figure okay um so what i'm trying to explain here is the part of static and uh, kinematic friction okay so there is certain limit of the uh, opposing force which uh, is opposed by the uh, irregularities of the surfaces and uh, we call it as a maximum frictional force and the value of the maximum frictional force we know is uh, mu times n okay where mu is a coefficient of the friction and n is a normal reaction okay n we already have and mu is the coefficient of the friction okay higher the coefficient of friction higher will be the friction force so this is the maximum value um, uh, which we have to overcome in order to move the body okay so till certain limit okay we have we have to up, start applying the force so how much amount of force will apply that much amount of frictional force will be there till certain limit and after that let's say whatever interlock was there in between the surfaces uh, it will get removed and there will be a little drop in the uh, frictional force and then you will have a kinematic or oh, sorry you will have a kinetic friction or dynamic friction also you can see okay So till this body is in equilibrium, well, yeah, let's call it as equilibrium. And after this body is in motion. So whatever is the friction here, we call it as a static friction. And here we call it as a kinetic friction or dynamic friction, you can say. Okay. Clear? any doubt till this so i'll if it is uh, not clear i'll still explain once again so we have block of weight w which is resting on a horizontal surface right as you can see here let me use laser pointer to show you and what are the forces acting on the block p is the force acting on the block w is the weight of the block acting downwards and uh, as w is downward we'll have the normal reaction upwards okay and ft is the frictional force because the surface here is now rough surface okay so what we are doing is we are trying to apply force p uh, in order to move the block okay so in order to have the motion so um we have to go on increasing the p in order to move the block if because at a um, let's say small amount of p uh, we cannot move the block because p is if it is small than mu into n that is the frictional force we cannot move the block right in order to move the block we should at least um, um, apply force uh, slightly higher than the mu into n okay because that is a frictional force so if applied force is equal to the mu into n it is a limiting condition and uh, as you go on increasing the force body will start in start the motion okay clear so have you understood this ft versus speaker at least till this part at least static part and what i said is there will be um, let's say uh, interlocking in between the uh, ups and downs or peaks and valleys of the surfaces and that will get removed and this little drop is because of it and after that we will have the a constant let's say 
friction frictional force and that is called as a dynamic or kinetic frictional force okay so as you apply force more than the mu into n body will start moving but there will be still a frictional force which is which you can call it as a kinetic or dynamic um, friction force okay so either it will come uh, you through sliding or if body is sliding or body body is rolling in that case also you will see this kind of friction okay shurjana i'll explain once again mu into n is the maximum frictional force okay in order to move the body we should apply force more than this okay is it clear to you shurjana yeah so till this how much amount of force will apply that much amount of frictional force will generate and this till this part we call it as a static friction okay till that we call it as a static friction because body is in equilibrium and we know after if you apply force more than mu into n what will happen body will start moving right so in that case body is in motion and the frictional force which will be there whenever body is in motion because body is still moving on the same rough surface right so there will be some amount of frictional force and that is that frictional force is called as dynamic friction or kinetic friction okay and that will be constant is it clear till this yeah okay now um yes what we can uh, refer from this is yeah okay about the drop yeah i explained two times i'll explain one more time about the drop i i said that there will be microscope why friction is there shojana because of the irregularities in between surfaces right so if irregularities are there there will be interlocking in between them whenever bodies are sliding and at this certain point what will happen we are just we are just um, this interlocks are suddenly removed okay because our applied force is more than the highest friction force so these interlocks are sud um, suddenly removed and causing this short drop here okay and then uh, let's say the frictional force will be slightly lower than the the static friction force so this is the reason behind it okay so in short the static friction and kinetic friction we have studied one more thing you should know here is the coefficient of friction let's say is mu and uh, in this static friction part you should assume it as a mu s okay so s is used because just to indicate that we are talking about the uh, static friction and in case of the coefficient of friction in the when body is in motion is mu k there is a difference in mu s and mu k okay even though surfaces are same the value of mu s and mu k will be different mu k is generally smaller than mu s okay normal reaction is same there is a difference in mu so there should be a difference in frictional force as well hence kinematic frictional force or sorry kinetic friction force or the friction force when body is in motion is less than the frictional force when body is at rest okay why because frictional force is mu times the normal reaction normal reaction will not change only the mu is changing right so that is if this is different this is also different okay and you can clearly see it through graph that uh, our f k and this is the value of um, f uh, s okay let's call it as f s static friction okay f s and this is the value of f k why fk is um you know why fk is there is a drop here 
and uh, from this what we can infer is fk is smaller than fs and uh, mu k is smaller than mu s okay so if in question uh, you have to uh, read it carefully if they are giving bodies at rest means they are talking about the mu s if body is in motion they are talking about mu k okay so next is it clear can i move towards next slide okay write down heading angle of friction So um, let's say this is the body of weight W, body of weight W, and uh, T is the applied force on the body. Okay, and uh, N will be the normal reaction. Okay, N is normal reaction and uh, mu is the frictional force sorry yeah mu into n is the frictional force let's call here f as the frictional force okay f as the frictional force or we'll, we can draw it here as well okay f as the frictional force so what is angle of friction so if you take a resultant of if you take a resultant of normal reaction and frictional force how it will look like it will look something like this right will it look like this you know re resultant of two forces how the resultant of normal reaction and frictional force okay r is under root of n square plus f square in this case okay or in general r is a resultant of let's write it in general r is resultant of n and f normal reaction and frictional force okay so angle between this um, r and the normal reaction is called as friction angle Just a minute. Um, I'll use different pen. This is phi. Okay, let's call it as phi. So this phi is called as friction angle. So this is your F, right? If you draw to this triangle. So I'll explain this triangle again here. N f you know law of triangle of forces if two sides of um, uh, if two forces are represented as two adjacent sides of triangle taken in order then the closing side will be the resultant but in opposite order so this is your resultant and this is the frictional force right so um, tan of phi, and this is your phi angle tan of phi is equal to perpendicular that is fs let's call it as fs frictional force divided by normal reaction and uh, what is frictional force mu into ns mu into normal reaction mu s into n and nn will get cancelled mu s is the um tan of fire okay so what we can conclude here is angle of friction tan of angle of friction is equal to the coefficient of uh, the friction can we conclude it like this tan of angle of friction is is uh, equal to coefficient of static friction mu s okay 
I'll repeat if it is not clear to you. The resultant of two forces F and R, F and N is R. Okay, R is a resultant, and the angle between R and normal reaction is phi. Okay, and uh, tan of phi is frictional force divided by normal reaction, of course, and frictional force is mu into n, and n will get cancelled, and that's how we can will get tan of phi is equal to mu s okay so phi you can also call it as angle of static friction okay because mu s is the coefficient of static friction yeah okay now what about the um, let's say uh, kinematic or dynamic friction when bo block is moving frictional force is still there but it is uh, let's say the applied force is more than the frictional force then only body is moving right okay so then the friction is uh, we know when body is in motion is a dynamic friction and which is represented by fk and uh, mu k is the frictional coefficient of friction at that time okay and uh, in that case the value of uh, let's say um, mu we have already studied in the last slide that that is um, smaller than the mu s okay uh, that is smaller than the mu s mu k is smaller than the mu s so what you can say is like this phi angle in that case there you cannot have you will not have phi angle okay because um, in that case uh, let's we have to talk about the angle between this okay let me just use another uh, pen here okay so let's call it as this is let, let's call this as s okay S is what? The resultant of applied force P and weight of the block. And this makes an angle alpha with the block. Okay. This makes an angle alpha with the block. So whenever body is, let's say, um, at rest, uh, we'll have the similar situation where uh, these two angles are equal, but whenever we talk about the kinematic friction, this alpha, whenever we talk about the kinetic friction or dynamic friction, this alpha will be greater than phi. Okay. Let me uh, dynamic friction. Okay. Why dynamic friction? Like, thing is like this because the applied force P is more than the frictional force okay and uh, if you talk about the frictional forces fs basically um, and uh, also the relationship between the static friction and kinematic friction kinetic friction is uh, fk is less than fs and mu k is less than mu s. This I have already explained in the previous slide. Okay. So, yeah, just write it down. Okay. Is it clear till this? Any doubt? Can I move towards next slide? Hello. <coughs> yeah, okay. Um, okay, um, Webho, I'll wait. Yes, is the resultant, uh, we got one question from Dharmesh. S is the resultant of 
P and W. Weight is weight of the block is W. P is the uh, applied force. Same as R. What is R? R is the resultant of N N F S. Okay, what is the physical significance of angle of friction? Okay, uh, you wait, Shubham. Uh, I am about to uh, come to that point. We have to study one more angle, that is angle of uh, repose. Okay, there I will explain um, how these things are related to each other. Okay. Uh, Dharmesh, there is uh, there is nothing here. You can just call it as alpha. Um, I'm just telling you the situation when body is in motion. Uh, what will be the value of alpha? That's it. Okay. The one angle of friction uh, is phi. Okay. Alpha just I'm explaining you through this figure. What is alpha? Okay. Any doubt? Any other doubt? Okay. No doubt. Then let's go to the next slide and write down heading one of friction Shurujana, there is no as such dynamic friction angle okay whenever we say angle of friction we are talking about the um, let's say angle of static friction mainly Okay. Yeah. So cone of friction. Cone of friction, similar concept. I will not repeat uh, the all things now. We have P here, applied force, weight W, and frictional force. You know all these things. Okay. Mm. You also know this is the N. You also know what is R. R is the resultant between normal reaction and the frictional force, and the angle between them is phi. Okay, and the cone generated by it. Okay, so if you rotate this P, okay, so depending if you rotate this P by 360 degree, you are you are basically creating a cone here. Are you following it? So this P is at this point, F is opposite to the P, right? And that is the reason you got resultant here. If you rotate, start rotating, revolve the, revolving the P by 360 degree, okay? What will happen? Frictional force will go just opposite to it, <coughs> right? And it will create a cone. Are you following how this cone is created? Okay, what we are doing is direction of the P is changing through 360 degree. So we can say circular base, uh, cir right circular cone will be traced out of it by the resultant. So just resultant accordingly start moving and uh, we'll get the cone. Okay, Harsh is asking me to explain again. No problem, Harsh. Let's try to understand. Have you understood till this point? Um, this is the frictional force, this is the normal reaction, and this is the resultant. The applied force. Is it clear to you till this? Yes. Now, if I apply force P from this side and frictional force on the, this side, how the resultant will look like? Can you tell me where uh, the resultant will come? So I have changed the direction of P by 180 degree. 
can you tell me where the reaction uh, re resultant of frictional force and normal reaction will come no it will not come up it will come like this here in this situation the resultant will be here right yeah on the left hand side so previously it was here now it came here so if you rotate it slowly slowly by 360 degree it will trace out a cone that is what i am trying to explain is it clear now Anyone have any doubt till this? Yeah, okay, good. Um, so, if any theoretical question comes, uh, what is cone of friction? So, it is basically the, you can say uh, it is stressed by the resultant when it is, uh, when the applied force P is gradually changed through 360 degree. Okay. Can I move towards next slide? <coughs> okay. Harsh is asking, Harsh, this is a two-dimension paper. I cannot draw um, the force P um, and its frictional, um, its uh, friction force when the angle is 270 degree okay are you trying to understand it i'm teaching you in two dimension yeah so you have to imagine at least because i told you from left hand side and right hand side try to imagine from front side and back side then you'll get four points and join them okay Write down heading angle of repose. So here we'll we'll see some applications of uh, the um, coefficient of friction and um, angle of friction, whatever we have studied. Previously, someone was asking us uh, the application for it. So you can uh, focus now. Okay. Suppose now we are putting this block on some horizon, uh, some inclined surface, right? And let's say the uh, lambda is the angle of inclination here. Okay. Um, We are applying, um, we are not applying any force here. Okay. Only the weight of block is uh, W. Normal reaction by the surface is N, but the surface is rough. Okay. So the coefficient of friction is, let's say, mu. Uh, Let's call it as a, and the frictional force will be mu n. Mu into n, okay? So if W is there, then this angle has to be W cos of lambda. This has to be W sine of lambda, correct? Because if this is lambda, this angle between their result, their perpendiculars also has to be lambda because for this um, for this horizon this line this is the perpendicular and for this line this is the perpendicular so if angle between these two line is lambda angle between their perpendiculars also has to be lambda is it clear till this Everyone understood how I have drawn the free body diagram?
this okay so now <clears throat> if this angle is very very small for example 0 degree body will whether body will move no right because you are not applying an external force if you are inclining okay this alpha is not zero so it's this sorry this lambda is not zero let's say 10 degrees something like that but surface is rough there is still chance that block will not move okay because surface is rough and uh, um, because of that there will be uh, friction in between block and surfaces which is trying to oppose the motion um, uh, motion of the block okay frictional forces in this direction Okay, use the red pen to highlight. Now, um, what is the driving force here when we have kept this block on inclination? The driving force is this W sine of alpha, that is sine component of the weight, is trying to slide down this block in the downward direction, right? And what is the opposing force here? The opposing force here is mu into n. Okay. Now, as you go on increasing the angle of inclination, at certain point, or you can say at certain angle, some certain limited angle, uh, body will just start to slide down. And that limiting angle is called as angle of repose. Okay. So what is the angle of repose? It's a limiting value of lambda. Are you following it till this? So angle of inclination here is the lambda. And as you go on increasing the lambda, there will be certain limiting value at which the body will just start sliding down. Um, and uh, on this plane and <clears throat> this limiting angle uh, lambda is known as angle of repose. If the angle of inclination is less than the lambda, body is in static equilibrium. Okay. But if the angle is more than the lambda, then body will slide down. Try to understand. So what should be the value of, what is the limiting value of lambda? Limiting value of lambda. Can you tell me what is the limiting value of lambda? Limiting value of lambda will be whenever the frictional force is equal to the sine component of the weight W. So you can clearly see normal reaction. If I apply the equations of the equilibrium, n has to be equal to W cos of lambda and uh, mu n is equal to the W sine of lambda. Okay, this is coming from the summation of all vertical forces equal to zero. And this is coming from the summation of all horizontal forces equal to zero. So if you put um, the value of n into this equation, what you will get is mu times w cos of lambda is equal to w sine of lambda. W, w will get canceled. Tan of lambda is equal to mu, right? And but what is mu? Mu is nothing but the tan of phi. We already studied it. So thus, what we can say is whenever lambda is equal to phi, okay, whenever the angle of inclination is equal to the, or angle of repose is equal to the angle of static friction. Okay, So this is the advantage of the angle, uh, static friction. If you know the static friction, okay, or if you know the angle of friction, you can directly tell at which angle of inclination the body will slide down. Is it clear to you all? Let me know if you have any doubt here. <clears throat> okay, if no doubt, then we'll move towards uh, next slide.
Yes, Pranjul, right. Angle of repose is equal to the angle of static friction. Okay. What is uh, lambda? Limiting value of lambda is angle of uh, repose and that is equal to the angle of static friction. Uh, Manika, what is your doubt? Can you ask me in a little uh, emphasis more on it? Okay, I'll repeat once again. Try to uh, listen carefully. Okay, um, it's very very simple. Okay, try to understand. Um, I have draw. Everyone understood free board diagram. Anyone have any doubt in the free board yes. diagram? Harsh, Manika, have you understood the free board diagram? Yes, okay. Have you understood these equations of the equilibrium, how I have written? Summation of all vertical forces is zero. Summation of all horizontal forces equal to zero. What are the forces in vertical direction? N. So N has to be equal to W cos lambda. Right? And uh, summation of horizontal forces, mu N has to be equal to W sin of lambda, right? Is it clear till this part? If you have any doubt, I'll repeat this again. Okay. Now, I have just kept the value of n into the second equation, this equation. So what is the value of n? W cos of lambda. So W cos of lambda times mu is equal to W sine of lambda. W, W will get canceled what we'll get is sine of lambda divided by cos of lambda is equal to mu. So tan of lambda is equal to mu. And what we know what is mu, mu is tan of phi. So what we can conclude out here is angle of repose is equal to the angle of static friction. Okay. And that is equal to the coefficient of friction. I'll repeat tan of angle of repose is equal to tan of angle of friction. And that is equal to the coefficient of friction. Okay. And what is angle of repose? Angle of repose is the limiting value of lambda, okay, at which body will just start to slide down. Dharmesh, are you following? Arsh and Dharmesh, is it clear to you? Okay, if you have not written, write it down. Body will just start, start sliding down. Okay. Um, at the some limiting value of lambda and that is called as angle of repose. Okay. Yes. Pranjul only in case of inclined surfaces. If body is kept on horizontal surface, it will not move, right? Because unless and until we don't apply any external force to it, it will not move. That is the first law of Newton. Body will try to, um, let's say, um, be in the state of rest unless and until external force is applied on it. Here, Harsh is asking the physical significance. I think you have not understood this. Um, the physical significance of this is if you know the coefficient of friction, coefficient of friction of the surface, okay, you can tell or if you know the let's say tan of phi either of these two is known to you what we can tell is till 
what inclination you can put this block without sliding or um, you can uh, say that at which inclination uh, the body will start sliding down are you following i i told you if lambda value is less than the phi what will happen body will not slide down if lambda value is more than phi body will slide down that is what you can make a physical significance out of it okay so what we can do is uh, mm, take some uh, wooden block okay make some angle and put one book on it and start um, let's say um, uh, increasing the inclination angle you will see that at certain point uh, the let's say this is you let's say your wooden um, slide and on that you are pu putting one book at some particular angle uh, the book will start sliding down okay because uh, let's say the wooden surface which you have taken is little rough and uh, and then take a smooth one and see the difference okay because uh, in both the cases we have different coefficient of friction different coefficient of friction will cause the different value of lambda okay that is the significance of it anyone have any doubt till this okay so i'll just make a little complex situation to the same figure and you try to draw the free body diagram now nothing uh, more i'm asking just try to draw the free body diagram okay so we got uh, inclined uh, we got to let's say um, a block which is kept on an inclined surface with an angle alpha for example and uh, we are applying some force p okay. but force p is applied at certain angle let's say that angle is um, uh, theta at theta angle we are applying force p So try to draw the free body diagram for this. Coefficient of friction is mu in between the surface and the body. Okay, let me help you all. So here, or let's say the P is, um, here okay, same thing if i draw there or here nothing different um making an theta angle okay so weight is acting downward we know this is all this also has to be alpha uh, so this is w cos of alpha this is w sine of alpha this is normal reaction okay again this p has to be divided into two parts p cos of theta and p sine of theta and uh, yeah depending on body whether it is moving down or uh, moving up we have uh, the let's say coefficient we have frictional force direction okay suppose body is sliding down in that case coefficient of the frictional force is in this direction 
because frictional force is always opposite to the motion okay um, if body is here assumption is body is sliding down so that is the reason i am drawing it upwards if body is moving up because of the force p then frictional force will be in downward direction that is the only difference okay so here body is sliding down is our assumption okay so if question comes like body is sliding down because of the self weight at particular angle um, alpha how much amount of force p we have to apply in order to stop the body okay um, or let's say if uh, um, if body is sliding down um, or the question can also be like this like how much amount of force p we have to apply in order to start moving the body in the upward direction okay so if you want to move the body in the upward direction the frictional force in that case will be the downward direction okay so that is the only difference okay and uh, so this is how you will make assumption and draw the free body diagram and then you perform the equilibrium analysis on it the summation of all horizontal forces equal to zero summation all vertical forces equal to zero and you will get equations out of it in order to solve the problem okay but if you know the free body diagram other things you can easily do anyone have any doubt in this so okay we got one question from harsh um we have assumed the force be passing through same point yes all these problems we consider and consider that all the forces are passing through same point see here also mu and i am drawing at the down but still i am i'll consider it in the uh, let's say passing through the same point right are you following okay kanishk is asking one question p or cos p cos p is our applied force okay um kanishk and uh, p cos theta is the horizontal component of the force and p sin theta is the vertical component of it i didn't understand what is your question the applied force is p and these two are the um, let's say the components of it yes so you know i have explained uh, before as well direction of frictional force is always opposite to the motion if body is moving in upward direction frictional force is in the downward direction if body is moving in downward direction frictional force will be in the upward direction so read the question carefully whenever you get where body is moving and accordingly draw the direction of the frictional force Surjana is asking one more question: What to take when we need to change the direction of motion? I didn't understand your question. What to take means um, um, direction of motion. If you are considering in what, if body is moving in this direction, motion is in this direction, right? Frictional force will be in this direction. This is one part I am explaining. If body is moving in this direction. then frictional force will be in this direction are you following sujana is it clear to you okay okay yeah everyone understood how to draw the free body diagram later we will solve some questions on it then it should be easy for you to solve okay there i expect you to solve on your own um, because if free body diagram is known 
equations of equilibrium are known then there is nothing else to teach okay so if you have any free if you have any doubt in this you should ask me now so that when we solve questions things uh, you should be independently able to solve the questions Harsh, yes, you are right. Uh, that uh, angle of repose is defined as uh, the point or the angle at which body will just about to slide. Yes. Yes, you are correct. Okay. So I assume that uh, till this you all are um, comfortable. Let me see if we have any other uh, theory part to explain. Yes, we have one more uh, topic uh, which we have studied yesterday about the ladders. Now I'll bring friction to it. Can I move towards next slide? Yeah. Okay. Mm. Let's take the situation. Okay, we got one question from Harsh here. If the angle is less than the angle of repose, uh, or the angle of friction, will it be stand out or not? Yeah, what I was explaining you, Harsh, is if your lambda value is less than the angle of repose, or let me write it down. Okay, and uh, let's say angle of inclination. Okay, if angle of inclination is less than the angle of repose, body will not slide. And if angle of inclination is greater than angle of repose, body will slide. Is it clear? Let's take example of ladder, which we have studied in the last class. Mm, this point is point A. And this point is point B. Okay. And these are our surface. And now surface is rough. Okay. And now I want you to draw the free body diagram of it. The weight of the ladder is W acting at a CG. Okay, this is the input to you. Try to draw the free board diagram. Yes, so correct. Um, frictional force will also come. Mm. Okay, let me explain you. Um, so, because of the weight, body will try to, uh, let's say, slide. This part will try to slide down, and uh, A will try to move towards rightward direction. And both at both points A and B, we have uh, a normal reaction. R B and R A. 
okay this is our a point uh at both the points will have the frictional forces that is mu1 n1 and here uh, it will be enough for direction mu2 n2 as uh, already we written weight will be acting in downward direction okay this is how it will look like yes two frictional forces and uh, <clears throat> the weight that's all See, even if it is not sliding, why it is not sliding, Aman? Is it not? It is not sliding means what? Because the frictional force, it is not sliding, right? And the direction of friction force is up, opposite to the motion. Yeah. There is no chance that this ladder will uh, move in this direction, right? it will it will move in this direction only like this b part will come down and a part will uh, go towards right unless and until you don't apply any other force a will not go towards left hand side you agree or not yeah so if if it is not sliding a is not sliding towards rightward means what it is not sliding because of the friction in between the ladder and the surface right so you should decide the direction of the frictional force at this moment itself okay, we got one um, question here r is equal to n surujana um, i am saying ra and rb are reactions okay so you can use any uh, na and nb also you can use you can use ra and rb it's your choice okay Yeah, yeah, here, okay, here I used N1, N2. Let's make it more, uh, yeah, okay, N1 and N2. Now I think it should be uh, clear to you, Srijana. Okay, N1 is reaction at A point and N2 is reaction at B point. I hope it is clear now. Okay, let's solve some questions now. Simple questions. Okay, uh, today. Um, no, nothing fancy. Okay. Okay. Um, weight of the block is, uh, let's say 200 Newton. Uh, or let's say hundred Newton coefficient of friction is, um, um let's say 0.2. 10 Newton. How much is the frictional force? Yeah, can you tell me the answer? How much is the frictional force in this figure? Yeah. Okay. Ten Newton. Some twenty Newton. Any other answers? Nine point eight.
two twenty. <clears throat> okay, we got like variety of answers here. Some are writing twenty, some are ten, some are nine point eight two. Okay, let's try to solve this question. It's the simplest question if you understand the concept of friction. Okay, this will tell you whether you understood the friction concept or not. If you try to draw the free body diagram of this figure, how it will look like? Hundred Newton force will. Uh, hundred Newton is the weight of the block. Normal reaction will be st still hundred Newton. Okay. The rightward force is ten Newton, and the frictional force will be in the leftward direction. Okay, FR or FS. Okay. How much is the uh, frictional force? Maximum frictional force. Mu into n, okay. Mu is 0.2, n is 100, so it is 20. 20 is the minimum force which you have to apply in order to start moving the body, okay. But how much amount of force we have applied? We have applied only 10 newton force. So how much frictional force will generate at this point? The frictional force in this case will only be 10, 10 because you have not applied 20 or more than 20, okay. So are you getting it? If I ask this question, let's say 30 Newton is the force applied. And in this case, what is the frictional force? In that case, can you tell me the answer now? In this case, if 30 Newton is the applied force. Yeah, in this case, 20 is the correct answer because our applied force is more than 20. But the maximum frictional force can reach up to 20 Newton itself. Okay, so I hope you are getting it. Here we are just applying 10 Newton. So frictional force will be only 10 Newton. If you, if you apply 5 Newton, frictional force will be only 5 Newton. If you apply 15 Newton, frictional force will be 15 Newton only because for every action there is equal and opposite reaction. We have studied. Um, the third law right and body is in equilibrium body is not moving okay so body is not moving here it means summation of all horizontal forces equal to zero and that is possible only when f s equal to 10 okay so that is the reason 10 is the correct answer in this case don't get confused with mu into n mu into n is a maximum frictional force okay mu into n is a maximum frictional force okay this is maximum frictional force which can be or maximum possible frictional force or in other words 20 newton is the minimum force you have to apply in order to start moving this body is it clear dharmesh i have not subtracted anything I have not subtracted Dharmesh. 10 Newton is the applied force. See, um, I'll explain you through some um, see, very simple example. You take a very, let's say, heavy box and try to push it. You push it with one hand with certain force, okay? Let's say you are applying 15 Newton force, uh, let, or let's say 150 Newton force using one hand to the box okay and now use your both the hands so this is a first situation and uh, second situation is same box now you are using two hands to push it okay you are in this case let's say 150 newton and uh, in this case 200 newton okay and assume in uh, the frictional force is 300 Newton. In both the cases, you are not able to move the body because the, your applied force is less than the uh, the frictional force. In in this case, what is the frictional force? 150 only, right? Because maximum frictional force is 300 Newton, and you are just applying 150 Newton the mesh. So reaction will be, or the frictional force in that case only will be 150 only, right? Same in the case of 200 Newton. 
you are applying 200 newton so frictional force generated will be also 200 uh, newton right how can you say that frictional force in that case will be 300 we cannot say like that right 300 is the maximum frictional force or the minimum frictional force you have to apply in order to move this box okay similarly in our problem 20 is the maximum frictional force or the minimum force you have to apply to the body in order to start moving it okay this is how you can refer it <clears throat> so in this case the frictional force is the 10 so you should type 10 answer here i hope it is clear to everyone okay so if this is clear then at least the concept of friction is clear to you now we can um, solve some questions randomly take one question okay um, i'll read the question you write it a circular roller of radius 5 cm no need to write it completely okay you can just write in short circular roller of radius 5 cm and weight 100 newton is resting on a smooth horizontal surface smooth horizontal surface okay each statement is important and he is held in the position by an inclined bar AB okay AB is an inclined bar length is 10 centimeter as shown in this figure okay horizontal force 200 Newton is applied acting at point B find the tension in the bar AB okay so you have to find tension in bar AB Okay. I'll give you two minutes of time to solve this. And you try to tell me the answer here. Okay, uh, we got 100 Newton. No, 100 Newton is not correct. Okay, this is, let's call this as theta. One hint I'm giving to you. Two thirty here, yeah, okay. Yes, two two thirty one is the correct answer. Yes, right. 
some of you all already got it good so yeah if you try to draw the free body diagram here how it will look like we have one force 200 newton right towards right hand side we have one force here let's call it the tension ab which we have to calculate and one normal reaction in upward direction because this is resting or uh, this roller is resting on a horizontal surface so let's call it as a b this angle is 90 degree these two values are given to you your um, base is 500 uh, 5 centimeter and uh, the diagonal is 10 centimeter so cos of uh, theta will be cos of theta will be base divided by hypotenuse so it will be for 60 degree theta is 60 degree right So theta is 60 degree. So means this total angle has to be uh, 90 plus 660. It is 150. So the remaining angle will be 120. Okay. So yeah, just now use Lamy's theorem. 200 divided by sine of 120 is equal to. Um, a b divided by sine of 150 and that is equal to tab is equal to sine of 90 so tab you can easily calculate by this tab is equal to 200 into sine 90 is 1 and divided by sine of 120 that's all right so you can easily calculate here tab that will be equal to um, 231 and if they are asking, if they are asking na normal reaction at point um, of contact, you can also call it as calculate it. A B. A B you can calculate uh, if they are asking. But in this case, they are just asking you the uh, tension in the bar A B. The so 231 is the correct answer. Okay. Is it clear till this 231? Yeah. Now I'll make little more complexity to it. Can you tell me the um, same problem? Okay, same problem. Can you calculate the vertical reaction at point C? You have to consider all things, right? What is vertical reaction? So here you have to bring the weight term also that is into you. Because FB here is not just coming from the normal reaction, it is also coming from the weight. But we don't have to worry about this. That's why I have not included. I have directly focused on the first and third equation here uh, or third term, not the first, second in between term. But if you need to calculate the uh, let's say vertical reaction at let's call this point as a point c you need to know in a b what is the weight component what is the reaction component okay let me just go to the next slide to explain this what i'm trying to say here fb is actually a reaction minus weight okay weight is acting in downward direction reaction is acting in upward direction so that is why sign convention is considered like this fb you can calculate using this equation fb is equal to sine of 150 into 200 divided by sine 120 so fb you should get it as 115.5 okay 115.5 is your fb now so 115.5 is equal to rc minus weight is already given to you weight is 100 newton so RC is what? 115.5 plus 100. That is equal to 215.5 Newton. 
okay are you following it I hope it is clear till this to you all of you. Can we uh, move towards next question? Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah. Take one more. Um, a ladder AB. A ladder AB of weight W and length L. Okay. Weight W. Length L. So, okay. Everything is in general, written in general. Is held in equilibrium by an horizontal force p as shown in the figure okay is held in equilibrium by a horizontal force p as shown in the figure assume ladder to be in a uniform body okay and all surfaces are smooth find the value of p all surfaces are smooth Meaning is you don't have to consider the friction in, in this problem and previous problem also that we have used this term. Okay. Yeah. Assume ladder to be a uniform body and all surfaces are smooth. So basically uniform body means CG is at the center. You can uh, say here it has a W. So L by 2 distance, L by 2 distance will be there from the ends where you will have the CG. Okay. Yeah. Find the value of P. So the options you will have W tan of theta 2 W tan of theta W by 2 tan of theta W by 4 tan of theta. Very simple question. Yes. Yeah, you can post your answers. Yeah, what is theta here? Yes, correct. Theta is this angle. Theta is the angle between the um, ladder and the vertical. Okay, anyone? Okay, let's try to solve this. Summation of all horizontal forces equal to zero and, and summation of all vertical forces equal to zero, we know when it is in equilibrium because it is clearly mentioned is this, this ladder is held in equilibrium because of the um, external force P here, right? So, Summation H is equal to zero. Horizontal force are P. Uh, let me draw the free board diagram here. Um, in free board diagram, you will have NA, normal reaction. NB is one more normal reaction. So only two horizontal forces, 
that is p in leftward direction and uh, in rightward direction it is na summation of all vertical forces is equal to zero another equation of equilibrium vertically we have w coming down and we have one force going upward that is equal to nb okay and this is not a um, equation of um, let's say concurrent system so it's not a concurrent system uh, it is non concurrent system so we can use equation of third equation of equilibrium take moment at any point let's say you are taking moment about point b summation of all moments about point b is equal to 0 what you will get is um, n a into so this is theta miss this whole length has to be l sin of theta and this is l cos of theta half of the length will be l by 2 sin theta and l by 2 sin theta okay so na into l cos theta is equal to w into l by 2 sin of theta this is the equation you will get whenever you take a moment about point b okay now here ll will get cancelled and uh, na you can directly write it as w by 2 sine of theta okay and uh, na is equal to p so your answer is w by 2 sine of theta so option c is correct in this case okay clear to you all let me know if you have any doubt Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, yeah, this is n is equal to w by tan. Okay. Yeah. Option is in tan. Yes. Right. Because cos theta will go to the right hand side. Sin theta by cos theta is tan theta. N is equal to w by 2 tan theta. Is it clear now, Sonali? Yeah. Okay. Um, next one is we'll take one last question and then we'll stop today's session. Okay. A B and C. A man weighing eight uh, six hundred newton. A man weighing six hundred newton. Okay. Mm. Yeah, a man weighing six hundred newton uh, newton stands on a horizontal beam of negligible weight at point C. Okay, he is standing uh, at point C, mm -hmm. and uh, okay, and holds a string passing over. And he's holding one string passing over two smooth pulleys. Okay, um, so he... 
here it is coming so like this through a pulley and uh, okay so like this i'll repeat the question a man weighing 600 newton stands on a horizontal beam of negligible weight at point c and holds a string passing over two smooth pulleys and attached to point b on the beam as shown in the figure find the tension in the string find the tension in the string tension negligible weight pranjol a man is weighing 600 newton stands on a horizontal beam of negligible weight i mentioned there negligible weight at point c holds a string passing over the two smooth pulleys okay two smooth pulleys okay weightless um, beam okay, these are the assumptions find the tension in the string okay so how the free board diagram will look like we have one tension here okay free board diagram of a beam i am drawing and the weight of the man acting downwards okay um and one more um, component there will be which is um, tension okay let me just uh, draw first the free board diagram of this another pulley here okay or man so man is of some weight acting downward as man is uh, having some weight we have a normal reaction and okay coming because of it and we will have some tension in the string so this is the free board diagram of man is it clear how much is the weight 600 so t plus n is equal to 600 so what is the normal reaction 600 minus tension in the string okay so when we draw the uh, now this is a free board diagram of beam in fbd this tension in the string and here what it will come is the normal reaction because surface reaction whatever will be there same we have to take it on the beam so it will be 600 minus tension clear now which which is this 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 part is remain so this is rh and this is um, let's say take any direction here let's say rv these are the reactions horizontal and vertical reactions if we get a positive answer means our direction is correct if we get a negative answer means our direction is incorrect <laughs> yeah 400 is the correct answer is one so in order to get the t what you will do is um, you take a moment about point a You take summation of all moments about point A and equate it to zero. T into two is a counterclockwise moment, and thus has to be equal to a clockwise moment. That is six um, hundred minus T into four, right? So T will be equal to six hundred minus T into two because two two will get cancelled. So it is twelve hundred minus two T. 
2 t will come to left hand side so 3 t is equal to 1200 t is equal to 400 newton okay we are getting positive answer means whatever uh, um, uh, all the directions and everything is correct here okay reactions are not uh, asked so you don't have to worry about their directions and all and, and we are taking the moment about this point so ultimately we are ignoring them okay because these two rh and rv will not create any reaction at point a only the re force at uh, only the reactions at point t and b, at point b and c will create the moment and that we have already considered Everyone understood till this question? Anyone have any doubt? Yes, so that's all we have for today. Uh, if you have any doubt, I'll wait for one more minute. Otherwise, we'll end the session. Uh, yes, Rujana. Um, uh, uh, we will uh, we'll solve more questions on this uh, and uh, we'll give you the material. Uh, mater uh, material will be given from the institute point of view. I will, I will give you homework questions. Uh, okay. Once we end this topic, I'll give you homework question. And... Uh, I think if you just solve the booklets, that is more than enough. If you just go through the previous year questions, that is more than enough for the subject. Okay. Having a clear idea about the theoretical knowledge and uh, solving all previous year questions will be enough for this subject. Okay. Kanishka, I'll go to the previous slide. Let me know once you are done. Okay, so that's all I have. Others can um, leave if you want. Uh, I'm not going to teach any new topic. We will have homework questions for each topic. So let's say a couple of questions we'll solve here and few I'll give to you that you have to try on your own. Okay, so that's how it will go. Today I was planning to solve many questions, but um, most of the time went in explaining the theory concept. We'll solve the questions in the next class. Uh, Shubham um, is asking why mu s is greater than mu k. So, Shubham, you understood this drop here, why it is dropped? Yes. So you know FS is less. You know FK is less than FS. Do you agree? FK is less than FS. Yes. So if what is F? F is a frictional force, uh, and that is equal to mu into n, right? So if n is same, so only mu is changing, right? So mu k has to be less than mu s, right? Okay, any other doubt? Okay, then thank you all for joining this session and uh, we'll meet again next week. Uh, we'll continue this topic. Thank you all. Good night.